What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope you all are having a great day so far. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Um, getting into this episode of GH, I love the scene, honestly, with Mac and Felicia. I always love seeing Mac and Felicia. Um, they were babysitting the kids and stuff for Austin, well, for Maxie, while she was on a date with Austin. Um, I love when they were reminiscing about Maxie and Georgie when they were little kids. I love that moment, but the conversation kind of went left <laughs> very fast because Felicia started asking Mac, did he regret not having a biological child? And when she asked him that, I'm like, where is that coming from? Like, why are y'all having this conversation all of a sudden about do you ever, you know, regret not having a child of your own and stuff? I'm like, where the hell is this coming from after all these years? Um, you know, Mac was honest with her. He was like, you know, he never thought about it, but it would have been nice to have a child of his own. And even Mac was starting to get curious. He was like, what are we even talking about? <laughs> I'm like, please tell me Felicia ain't about to drop a pregnant bomb on him. I'm like, not at this stage in y'all life. <laughs> I'm just thinking because it was kind of weird. It's like, why are y'all having that conversation now? You would have thought that they would have had that conversation years ago. Like, and this is, I'm assuming by the way that they were talking, this is the first time she ever really asked him that question. Like, did he ever regret not having a child of his own? I'm like, I feel Mac on that because if I'm Mac and we're having that conversation, my first thought would be, I would have to sit back like this. Why are we having this conversation right now? Like, what are you trying to say to me? <laughs> so... I'm like, because ain't no way in the world, if I'm Max age, because I'm pretty sure Matt got to be about late 50, early 60. I'm not going off the actor's age. I'm going off the character age. Um, I would assume he would be late 50, early 60. So there's no way in hell by that point in my life, I'm trying to have a child right now. It, it, it's, it, it, that's, that would be done for me. <laughs> Now, if we talking 45, 46, maybe, but we talking late 50, like 59, 60, no, mm -mm, no, that, that ship is sailed. Because <laughs> I was side-eyeing Felicia this whole episode, like, what is you trying to say? Like, where wh are you coming at with this? Like, what's your angle? Because I know you ain't trying to tell me what I what I feel like you're trying to tell me, like, because you, 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 you angling for something, and I'm trying to figure out what it is, because I'm hoping it's not what I think. Because if that's the case, I, we might have to slow down. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> not at this age. No. Mm -mm. I'll be damned if I have grandchildren that's older than my child. Like, no. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. I can see the look on Mac's face. Mac was like, what, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> I was, listen... I was scared for Matt for a minute because I'm looking at Matt like, brother, I hope she ain't trying to tell you, too. I hope she's not trying to tell you what we both thinking, brother. I hope not. Matt, uh, Felicia done lost her mind. Uh-uh. No. Mm -mm. I would tell her straight up, listen, I love our grandchildren. I love our children. But I'm not bringing no more. I'm not raising no more babies. <laughs> I tell her straight up. We we done. Uh, no. You better not be trying to tell me you peed on a little stick and it turned up positive. No. Mm -mm. It better be a false positive. <laughs> Hell nah. Hell nah. I was like, mm-mm. What, what I look like in my 80s sending a child off to college? Hell no. <laughs> I felt bad for Matt for a minute. I was about to have a stroke my damn self when she was talking that foolishness. I'm like, where you going with this right here? We gonna have to we gonna have to nip this conversation in the bud right now, not tonight. We not having this conversation, not today, not ever. <laughs> that ship is sailed. We're about about ten fifteen years a little past that. Mm -mm. Hell to the gnaw, to the gnaw, gnaw, gnaw. No return to cinder. Uh, -uh. pew. Speedy Gonzalez, I would have been out of that apartment. <laughs> you ain't about to tell me no mess like that. Uh, uh. Mm. -mm. When I feel like whenever a woman start reminiscing with you about when the kids was little and start talking about, oh, what would it be like if we had another bait? No, I'm going to shut you down. Nope. 
Mm-mm. I swear, every time, I feel like every time a female starts talking about when the kids was little, it turns into a conversation about what if. I don't want a what if. I don't play what if. I, I it, it, Nope, because I know where you're going and the answer's hell no. Nah. Nope. I would shut that conversation down immediately, expeditiously. Mm-mm. Ain't no more babies coming up and through here. Nope. <laughs> we done. Uh-uh. Felicia better go on with that foolishness. I felt like that's where she was kind of going with that conversation. I was like, I hope not. Not at y'all age. I'm just saying. No. Mm-mm. I heard of late in life children, but not that damn late. <laughs> I'm like, ain't she past menopause? Like, no. Mm-mm. I bring my little child up to the school and they think I'm the grandparent, but that's my actual child. No, hell no. No. And notice that when Mac and Felicia got home, she was trying to lead him up to the bedroom. I'm looking like, Mac, don't go up in that bedroom. Don't go in that bedroom with her. You need to go sleep in the guest room or something. You need to go sleep on the couch. She is trying to trick you. Do not go in that bedroom with her because she talking about babies and do you regret. Don't go in that bedroom with her because I know what she's trying to do. She trying to turkey bait shell behind. Don't go up in there. No. Mm-mm. I'm telling you. They go up in that bedroom, and a few weeks from now, she going to be like, oh, I don't feel good today. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> I see what she trying to do. Uh, you ain't about to be, you ain't about to play with me. No. Nah, um, so anyway, moving on from that, Maxie is living the life right about now. She's living high on the hog ever since this company done went public. Like, she even taking Austin out to dinner and paying for it. I said, go ahead, Maxie. Like, she's sitting there talking about all this expensive food and all that. She done got the taste for the finer things in life. I'm not mad at Maxie. Because if I came into a lot of money and stuff like that, I would definitely be switching up a little bit about what I buy and all that. You know, buying a little bit of nicer things that's more on the expensive side. You know what I mean? I don't blame Maxie, you know, because this is the first time in a long time, if ever, that she could finally buy, like, you know, expensive stuff. You know, I don't blame her. You know, she got to chill out a little bit because with this whole Sasha nonsense going on, you might want to pump your brakes on the spending. I'm just saying because them stocks might not be as healthy once this news come out publicly. So you might want to slow down. <laughs> Gonna have to be on some Bobby Valentino's of slow down. You, you slow it down. Don't don't do too much now. Um, And she was trying to, you know, because her and her and Austin after dinner, you know, was trying to have a little drink or whatever, a little nightcap. She was trying to pay for that, too. I said, Maxie, let the man pay for something now. I understand, you know, your, your, you know, your cup runneth over with money lately, but chill out. Let him pay for something. He still got money, too. He a doctor. <laughs> and Austin had to remind her that. He was like, I know you you knew money, but I got money, so I can pay, you know. You pay for dinner, I can pay for the nightcap that we're having. I said, exactly, Maxie, calm down. Um... Because, you know, he was trying to set up another date with her after they, you know, after she got home or whatever. He was trying to set up another day. And she was, you know, talking about all the stuff that she busy doing the next day with the kids because she got to bake cupcakes and stuff because they got activities. And Austin felt like she didn't want to, you know, hang out with him or something. That's the vibe that he got off of her because she seemed a little hesitant. I mean... I don't think that's the case, per se, because if she didn't want to hang out with Austin, she wouldn't have done that now. I just think that maybe she's trying to pump her brakes when it comes to a guy. And this is what I was hoping for for Maxie, because after that whole Peter nonsense, she needs a break from the relationship department. I just feel like she needs a little break. Plus, she had to spend some time away from her kids because of Peter. You know what I mean? So I think it's time for her to focus on her kids, herself, her company, you know, it's time it's just focus on that stuff, you know, and I think her and Austin should just keep things casual. You know, I don't think that they should define what they are per se. I just feel like they should just, you know, casually date, you know, go out to dinner, hang out a little bit, you know, but they don't have to put labels on what they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's my man. That's my woman. No, you ain't got to do all that. Not right now. You know what I mean? Like, give her a break when it comes to these men. I'm just saying. Um... So when they were at the Savoy and whatnot, you know, Spinelli coming up in there trying to flirt with some chick and the chick done turned Spinelli down. I felt bad for Spinelli. Um, but, you know, Maxie was trying to give him words of encouragement and stuff like that, you know, and 
Austin was trying to be nice to him, you know, inviting him to go out with him and stuff like that. Um, I think he said he was going kayaking or something like that. And Spinelli was still giving Austin a bit of attitude. And even Sonny kind of noticed that the way Spinelli was looking at Maxie, that he might still have residual feelings for her. I wouldn't doubt it, you know, but Spinelli pretty much felt like Maxie moved on at this point or whatever. But I'm pretty sure if Maxie wanted Spinelli back and she told him, I'm pretty sure he would do it. Um, you know, because old feelings, you know, they don't necessarily go away. So I'm pretty sure he would welcome, you know, the opportunity to be with Maxie again. I don't know how I feel about that. Would I mind, me personally, if Maxie and Spinelli got back together again? I don't know. Because they were different back then when they were dating. They were, you know, younger, you know, so to see them a little older now, trying it out, being boyfriend and girlfriend and stuff and potentially married, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it could be different than it was back then. Who knows? Um, And Spinelli was even trying to tell Britt, like, she should give the whole matchmaking thing another try and stuff like that. Because he was telling Sonny how he got a business venture that he's trying to do. Something tells me that that matchmaking service that Britt is doing, something tells me Spinelli created that. Like, maybe that's what he's doing, like creating a dating app or something. Because it's definitely in his wheelhouse. And Spinelli, you know, he can make a fortune off of doing stuff like that. You know, dating apps and all that stuff. So maybe that's what he's doing. Um... Because I know at first, I thought maybe he was into Brit at first, especially with the way he was acting when she got stood up on her date. He was acting weird around her, like weirder than usual. So I kind of got the feeling that maybe he was into her or something, but maybe it was because of that dating app that she was talking about. Maybe that's the app he created. Um, who knows? Um, but, you know, I'm holding out hope for Spinelli. I, I definitely feel like, he, you know, he going to find somebody. Whether it be him and Maxie getting back together, or whether it be him and somebody new, who knows? But trust, there's love out there for everybody, in my opinion. Um, so moving on from that, so Nina, Britt, Obrecht, they were having like a ladies' night, you know. It kind of got cut short <laughs> because Obrecht was over it when she saw Nina over there talking to Sunny and stuff like that. Obrecht wasn't having it because you know she's still pissy at Sunny because of the whole Scott situation. Obrek is not playing. She said, listen, Sonny will feel my wrath if anything happened to Sky. <laughs> Lisa do not play about her man. Not at all. Um, and she's still, of course, being all up in Brit business about her love life. I totally get where Lisa was coming from. She want her daughter to be happy. You know, because Brit, I feel, probably still is mourning Jason and stuff like that. But it's like, you know, at some point you got to move on. Plus, she's worried about her illness and you know, the Huntington, uh, Huntington's disease or whatever, because she feel like she ain't got a whole lot of time left in the earth. But my whole thing is a lot of us probably ain't got a whole lot of time left, you know, because and I say that because it's like life is short. You know, you're here today, could be going tomorrow. So I feel like Britt just needs to put herself out there and have a good time because that's 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 what I'm about right now. You know, I'm, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. So it's all about having fun, you know. Ain't no sense in prolonging nothing. She might meet a good dude. You never know. And had a time of her life while doing it. I say, why the hell not? Um. So, of course, Lisa had to leave because she had to get back to her, her man. So, she couldn't stay long. And um, Britt had to go. So, of course, that leaves Nina by herself. And, of course, Sonny pops up on over there. I'm like, uh... <laughs> I'm glad Sonny didn't tell her about his argument with Michael because, in my opinion, I would have been pissed if Sonny did because it's none of her business. Um, What goes on in his family and stuff, that's that's none of her concern. Like, she need to mind her business because she's talking about, oh, did you have a hard day today? It's none of your business, Nina. Go sit down. And, of course, they start talking about Nixon and Falls. I'm so over them. Like, if the writers, they obviously are going to put them together. So my thing is put them together. Like, ain't no sense in slow burning it. He's divorced at this point. Go ahead and just put them together. I'm over it. Uh, <laughs> I don't really care for them as a couple. I'm just going to be honest. Like, it's not my cup of tea so far. So, you know, maybe he'll be different with her than he was with other women. Who knows? But I just feel like she's going to end up turning into another notch in his belt. Because Lord knows he got a lot of notches in that belt. So, who knows? Um, you never, I'm just saying. 
But, you know, Sonny also had to be at the Savoy because he had to make sure that Miss Wu's poker game was on the up and up. He had to make sure it wasn't nothing, you know, outside of their agreement going down because he, you know, Sonny, he was like, yeah, I'll shut it down if it if it's something, you know, funny going on up in here. He was like, it'd be something. So, you know, he was ready to, you know, tell his man that he can go because I guess the card game was going off without a hitch. And Sam, moving on from that, Sam was lying her ass off. She went to that doctor and was like, listen, I'm Harmony's niece. Alexis is her sister because she was trying to get an update on her condition. <laughs> I ain't mad at Sam for doing it. I'm like, shit, sometimes you got to lie. You know what I mean? Um, But it's crazy how it's so easy to do that, though. Like, you could just walk in and be like, yeah, that's my cousin. That's my sister. That's my brother. And the doctor would just be sitting here giving up the information. I'm like, you don't want to see no proof. <laughs> no nothing. Um, no ID. You just gonna give up the info? Okay. Um, I didn't understand why Alexis felt like she needed closure with Harmony. I didn't get it. I'm like, I guess. I felt like Alexis already got closure because you know everything Harmony has done. So, what more closure do you need? You know what I'm saying? You got closure with the Neil situation because now you know what happened to him. So, I guess. I guess she felt like she needed to vent to Harmony even though Harmony was unconscious. She had to just get everything that she was filling out, and then she'd be better, I guess. I suppose. Um, but I'm glad she did. You know, she just let Harmony know how ir you know, how upset she was because she, you know, really began to like Harmony as a friend. And for her to do all of this, you know, it pissed her off. So I'm glad, you know, she was able to get her anger out. Um, Michael, though, he needed to, you know, watch his tone of voice with Britt. Because, you know, he wanted to update on Harmony or whatever. And I guess Britt didn't give him the answer that he wanted. So he's talking about, oh, that answer ain't good enough. Well, what the hell you want her to tell you? That's the information she had for you at that moment. Michael need to calm down. I don't care if you are a Corinthos quarter man. You better chillax and get up out of Britt face where you get knocked down somewhere. <laughs> no, I'm tired of them. Y'all going to leave Britt the hell alone. She already stressed as it is. Ain't getting no sex. Ain't no, like leave her alone. Got a high stressful job. Like go sit down. Asking her all these questions because you want to know. I don't give a damn what you want. People in hell want ice water. <laughs> Michael need to go sit it down. Simmer down. Um. So Carly was trying to tell Willow, you know, everything that's been going on with Harmony and stuff and why she was out there that night. But, you know, she told her everything. The only thing she didn't get a chance to tell her was Harmony, not her mom. That's the only thing she didn't get an opportunity to tell her yet because they were interrupted by Michael and Britt because they had new developments. Apparently, Harmony is in horrible condition at this point. They had to stop the surgery, like, midway. Her organs are basically shutting down. Like, her organs are failing. Some are, you know, like, she's, she got, she's going to need more surgeries. Um, she's not doing so hot. Um, so, you know, Harm, uh, Willow, of course, was begging her mom to wake up and all that foolishness. I cannot wait to see her reaction when she finds out the truth. Like, the fact that Harmony's not her mother. And then when she finds out that Nina's her mother, like, I wonder what her... I know she's going to be shocked, probably hurt, angry. Or, like, she's just going to have a ball of emotions. Um, I understand, you know, Carly wanting to wait to tell Willow because she feel like now's not the time. But I totally agree with Michael. I feel like now is the time. Ain't no sense in waiting. Whatever your secret is, you need to let her know that, you know, that's not her mama. She need to know today. Even though she caught Michael up to speed about everything she told Willow, she she didn't tell him the secret because she felt like she needed to tell Willow first. I like that. You know, I feel like Carly's evolving a bit. You know, I like it because usually she would have been 10 times worse. But, <laughs> um, but I like that she, you know, she waiting to tell Willow what she got to tell her because she do need to know. ASAP and of course Harmony start opening her little beady eyes listen they need to have a cop outside her door with a with a handcuffs ready cause she need to be in jail <laughs> just take her to the prison infirmary and let her recoup there or whatever like she 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 need to go to jail don't pass go don't collect $200 just go, go to jail for all your foolishness so moving on from that you know I actually almost forgot all about Finn and Liz I really did. It's so much that was going on in this episode. I almost forgot about them. Um, but I like the fact that, you know, Finn, he wasn't about to let her stay in that hotel. 
you know, by herself. Like, even though she got security there, the hotel got security, it's a public place, he still felt like it was, it'd be better if he at least get a room next door, just in case some, some mess go down, you know what I mean? Like, he could be there and get to her quickly. I like that. You know, that's a man's man right there. Like, he was like, you know, I know that you can handle yourself, but I feel more comfortable being next door, you know? I, I respect that. And, you know, that's a huge sacrifice for him because that means he's not going to be staying, you know, at home with his daughter. At least he got Chase, you know, to stay with her and stuff like that. But that's that's pretty huge, you know, to to do something like that. That must mean he really sweet on Liz. Um, I'm loving the fact that Liz, they paired her up with men over the past couple years that don't have any, like, other relationship baggage, per se. Like, they only got eyes for her. I still find it, you know, it's going to probably be a problem for her to be dating Finn in the long run because we don't know if or when Hayden's ever going to pop back up. So that might be an issue down the line. But for right now, I like that, you know, when she's with a man, like the attention is on her. You know what I'm saying? Because the past men that she was with before, their attention was all over the place. They, their attention was every which way but her. So, <laughs> so it's good that she got a, a man's 100% undivided attention finally. But they need to figure out what's going on with this, this break-ins and stuff. Like, they need to call Ghostbusters, have a seance. They need to do something. Um, break out the, you know, the Ouija boards. Like, we need to figure this thing out here. Like, what is going on? Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comments. Let me know what you all thought, and I will see you all later. Actually, before I go, I just want to say a quick rest in peace to Jerry Verdorn, um, who played uh Ross Mahler on Guiding Light. He also played Clint Buchanan on One Life to Live. He passed away yesterday. Apparently he was having like a a, a months long battle with cancer. Um so rest in peace to him. You know, um condolences to the family. Um it's a sad thing man when you lose people, especially to cancer. Like it's horrible. I, I couldn't you know I lost my grandfather too like years ago to to cancer so i know how it is uh to lose somebody to that um it's tough you know but prayers to the family and everybody who who was close to him um but yeah hit the comment section let me know what you all thought about this episode and i will see you all later have a wonderful night peace